Thank you for joining me for this talk on anatomy for knee arthroplasty, what we need to know. This talk was delivered at the World Congress in Regional Anesthesia in September 2023 in Paris. This is my disclosure slide and none of these will impair my ability to deliver this talk. So what am I going to cover? I'm going to cover innovation of the knee and knee regional anesthesia options. When I first started performing uh, anesthesia for knee arthroplasty, it wasn't unusual for us to just use intravenous opioid and surgical administered local infiltration anesthesia. But some surgeons were happy for me to do whatever I wanted, so we used to perform femoral and sciatic nerve blocks. Now in these outcomes we got great patient results. Patients were comfortable and pain-free, but there was a problem. They were pain-free, but they were stuck in bed. They had such dense anesthesia of their legs that they weren't able to mobilize safely. And clearly, in this current um, era, we need to think about ways of optimizing analgesia whilst maintaining mobility. And hopefully, understanding the anatomy in a bit more detail will allow us to understand that. So we're now going to take a walk through the innovation of the knee in a bit more detail to help us understand regional anesthesia options. Let's start off with cutaneous innovation, and I'm going to introduce the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves. These have intermediate and medial branches, and you can see they take out innovation of a large part of the anterior surface of the knee. Exactly where is innovated will vary from individual to individual, but you can see how it potentially plays an important role for the incisions made for knee arthroplasty. We can now overlay the saphenous nerve, which is a target of the femoral triangle or adductor canal blocks, and we can also add in the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, which is perhaps less important for knee arthroplasty. Let's add in now branches from or innovation from the obturator nerve, the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, and the rest of the sciatic nerve. And you can see the cutaneous innovation of the knee is complex. What's also very important is osseous innovation. And you're going to see in a short while now why the femoral nerve is so important and why femoral nerve blocks were so effective when it came to analgesia after knee arthroplasty. The obturator nerve also has a role here, as does the sciatic nerve. Now we're going to look in a little bit more detail to branches of the sciatic nerve that have an important role to play in knee arthroplasty analgesia. So we can have a look here at the supralateral genicular nerve lying on that supralateral aspect of the femur just at the point where the femur flares out before it approaches the condyles. There is also a supramedial genicular nerve uh, and it stands to reason that there is an inframedial genicular nerve. So these three areas, these three nerves are all important. When we look at the lateral aspect, uh, the infralateral aspect of the knee it becomes a little bit more complicated. There is an infralateral genicular nerve, but there is also the recurrent fibula or recurrent perineal nerve. And these genicular nerves are important targets when we're looking at motor sparing knee blocks. Let's move those to one side now and let's add in the saphenous nerve and the nerve to vastus medialis. Now these are nerves that are traditionally blocked when you perform um, a femoral triangle or a duct canal block. But the femoral nerve also innervates the, nerve, the vastus intermedius muscle and the vastus lateralis muscle. And they also have a relevance or importance when it comes to knee arthroplasty analgesia. Let's move those nerves to one side now and superimpose the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves. And now we can see this complex jigsaw puzzle that contributes to innovation of the anterior aspect of the knee. But what about the back of the knee? Well, we can add in the obturator nerve and branches coming off the sciatic nerve, and these together form the popliteal plexus. And this is an important group of nerves that are responsible for innovating the back of the knee, which can contribute to pain after knee arthroplasty. We can also look at the anterior aspect of the knee in a slightly different manner, and we can break it down into quadrants. So you can see here the supralateral quadrant has all of those nerves we talked about already, but also there is contributions from the lateral articular nerve and the lateral retinacular nerve. If you look at the supramedial aspect of the knee, the same nerves we've talked about already, but also the medial retinacular nerve. We've got the infralateral component and the inframedial component. And you can now start to get an understanding that, comp that innovation of the knee is much more complex than perhaps we initially thought. So what does it all mean? We've got all of these nerves, we've got these genicular branches, we've got the nerve to vastus intermedius, lateralis and medialis. 
But what are we going to do with this information? Well, we can deconstruct the innovation of the knee into small component parts, a bit like taking pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And that allows us to come up with more focused options so that ultimately we can deliver motor sparing knee blocks, which we can use in addition to multimodal analgesics. So let's have a look at the front of the knee in a bit more detail. We mentioned the femoral triangle and adductor canal block, and what do I mean by that? Well, traditionally, the block that I'm about to describe was called the adductor canal, and the aim of that was to take out the saphenous nerve. We've subsequently, subsequently appreciated how important the nerve to vastus medialis is, and in order to get that, we need to perform this block actually at the apex of the femoral triangle, just as the adductor canal starts. So let's have a look at sartorius, and if we add in the adductor longus muscle, we're looking for that medial intersection between those two muscles. And at this point, we have the apex of the femoral triangle. And the femoral triangle here is highlighted in green. If I highlight now the vastus medialis muscle, we'll understand the, the, the muscles that, and boundaries that are important for the femoral triangle block. Let's look in a bit more detail now, and we'll highlight the, the sartorius muscle here. As we remove it, we will expose the superficial femoral artery and the saphenous nerve and the vastus medialis muscle. If we go in closer, we'll lose the saphenous nerve, and you can see that nerve to vastus medialis lying on the surface of the muscle, and it's separated by the vasto adductor membrane. So how do we find this apex of the femoral triangle? Um, well, this is not me praying just before doing it, but sometimes I do. This prayer sign will become relevant. We place the probe on the mid-thigh and slide medial, and then move cordad and kephalad until we identify the prayer sign. Once we've identified this prayer sign, we slide lateral for needle insertion. The prayer sign indicates the apex of the femoral triangle, and I'll show you how to do that next. We've got a probe placed on the medial aspect of the thigh now, and we're gonna slide up and down till the point when we see adductor longus coming in and marking that medial intersection between adductor longus and sartorius. At this point, if I apply a color overlay, you'll see sartorius, adductor longus and vastus medialis and that apex of the femoral triangle is dictated by the prayer sign what is that prayer sign i'll show you here we go you can see the hands of the prayer forming two borders here the sartorius and the adductor longus and when you get them both meeting that is the apex of the femoral triangle so how do we find our targets in the femoral triangle well once we've identified the apex of the femoral triangle we then need to slide our probe a little bit more lateral so we move lateral now, and now we've brought in the vastus medialis into view and the femur at the bottom of the screen. And we're looking in that groove between sartorius and vastus medialis to identify the nerve to vastus medialis. And we're looking lateral to the femoral artery to identify the saphenous nerve. Can you see them on this image? Well, I'll show you here. Now with this color overlay, you can see the nerve to vastus medialis, which isn't always easy to identify, and the saphenous nerve separated by that vasto adductor membrane. We've got those nerve targets here, and we aim to hide it, dissect that space and take both those nerves out. What does it look like in reality? Well, here's a nerve block about to be performed. Sadly, I didn't de-air my local anesthetic syringe, so you'll see a little bit of an artifact here. But I'm hydro dissecting that space between sartorius and vastus medialis, aiming to open up that plane. And as I do that, you'll start to see the nerve to vastus medialis being highlighted, now I'm going to cross the vasoductor membrane, get close to the saphenous nerve. I'm now going to walk over the top of that saphenous nerve and produce that winking sign. And that winking sign is a superficial femoral artery compressing with the pressure of local anesthetic injectin, injection. And now I know I'm deep to that vasoductor membrane. We can see those two nerves highlighted by stars here. You've got the nerve to vastus medialis on the right and the saphenous nerve on the left. So that's great. We've taken out the femoral triangle uh, by taking out the nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve. What about the back of the knee? Well, the aim of the back of the knee is to take out the popliteal plexus. There are a few ways that we can do that, but one of the ways is by doing an IPAC block, which aims to put local anesthetic in the interspace between the popliteal artery and the capsule of the knee. So we can do it the same way that we would do a popliteal sciatic nerve block, but avoiding the sciatic nerve and aiming to be close to the femur, coming from the lateral aspect. Or we could approach from the medial aspect, aiming for the same endpoint, but this time we need to be careful of those blood vessels you can see highlighted over here. 
thirdly, you could perform what we consider to be a true adductor canal block, a block where the popliteal vessels or rather superficial femoral vessels die through the adductor hiatus to perform the um, to become the popliteal vessels. And at that point, if you put local anesthetic in that adductor canal, the local anesthetic will track down to the posterior aspect of the knee. How do you get that image for the IPAP block? Well, here you can scan along the posterior aspect of the femur until you identify the femoral condyles and then come back again. You'll see a flat aspect of the femur, the popliteal vessels, and then we aim to put local anesthetic in that space between the femur and the popliteal vessels. What does that look like in, re in reality? Well, here's a video thanks to my good friend Jeff Gasden. He's placed his needle through that area, and as he's withdrawing the, the needle, he's injecting local anesthetic between the posterior aspect of the knee and the popliteal vessels. And you can see that local anesthetic deposited there. What about that medial injection I talked about? Well, here, a curved array probe is, is placed in the medial aspect of the knee, and the, the needle is literally placed between the probe and the posterior aspect of the femur, staying away from the popliteal vessels. You can see the needle passing over here, just about to inject some local anesthetic. So are there any added extras? Well, let's have a look at what we've covered already. We've covered here the nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve by doing a femoral triangle nerve block. Um, we can add in the genicular nerves and the nerve to vastus intermedius. And in addition, we can add in the cutaneous nerves. So let's see what this looks like in reality. And we'll start off by looking at the genicular nerves and the nerve to vastus intermedius. So if we look at the supramedial aspect of the femur, you'll see a point just as the bone starts to flare up as it comes towards the condyles. And at that point, you will often identify a genicular artery, and that's the position where the supramedial genicular nerve lies. If you look at the inframedial aspect of the tibia, at about the same point when the bone flares up, you'll see another genicular artery, and that's the point where you would find the inframedial genicular nerve. When it comes to the nerve to vastus intermedius, if you place the probe in a transverse orientation just above the patella uh, on the femur, you'll see a plane between the femur and the vastus intermedius muscle, and that's where you would take out the nerve to vastus intermedius. The supralateral genicular nerve is like a mirror image of the supramedial genicular nerve. And now when we look at the infralateral component of the knee, you can see you've got the recurrent fibula or perineal nerve on the infralateral aspect of the tibia, just at the point when that bone flares up, again looking for the artery, and then it comes to the infralateral genicular nerve, it lies in that space between the tibia and the fibula. Now in reality, I tend not to perform the infralateral genicular nerve block because I feel that that's too close to the recurrent perineal or recurrent fibular nerve, and I don't want to risk a foot drop but I do take out the recurrent fibula or perineal nerve, and a good way of making sure in the correct location is to place the probe in a transverse orientation, come onto the tibia, slide lateral to the fibula, and back onto the tibia, and then you can needle in that way, making sure you're staying away from the current, from the recurrent perineal nerve. So what does this look like in reality? So here's an example of a genicular injection taking place. We've got the genicular artery just at that point where the, uh, the bone is flaring up, this first technique is an in-plane injection aiming to lift that muscle up off the bone. Um, and we can also perform an out-of-plane injection. The pulsatile genicular artery is, is, is demonstrated here. And here's a needle out-of-plane making contact with the bone and just lifting up that tissue up off the bone. So we talked about the geniculars and the nerve to vastus intermedius. What about the antiferomal cutaneous nerves, or QTs, as Jeff Gaston calls them? Well, in order to find the QTs, we need to look in that plane above sartorius. We're going to focus on this plane here, which is where we weren't initially looking when we were doing our um, femoral triangle blocks. So let's have a look in that plane. And we're going to follow this finger here. This finger is going to point out one of the small terminal branches of the antiferomal cutaneous nerve. We're going to slide up and down the leg just to prove that these QTs are consistent. They're real things. We can see them lying above sartorius. And once we've identified those with a degree of confidence and seen small branches, we've identified the plane where we need to deposit local anesthetic. And literally, all we need to do is to put local anesthetic in that plane. So let's see that in action here. We've zoomed in in the area above sartorius. And what we're aiming to look at, we're going to slide up and down, see if we can identify branches of these cutaneous nerves. You'll see the nerves coming together and separating. Once we've identified those branches at an endpoint, 
we can then needle in plane. So here comes a needle uh, coming in plane. You see that needle identified. I'm going to aim to get into that fascial layer right next to the nerves here at this point, and we're going to inject local anesthetic as we go. You can see here local anesthetic opening up that space and surrounding those nerves. And if we go up and down, you can see those nerves are covered. So let's summarize what we've covered already. We talked about the femoral triangle block, the, the block formerly known as the adductor canal, to help with the nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve. We talked about doing the IPAP block, or a true adductor canal block, to cover the posterior aspect of the knee. We talked about adding in the geniculars and the nerve to vastus intermedius, and adding in the anti-femoral cutaneous nerves. So these blocks all give you some useful targets for regional anesthesia. So to summarize, we've got various block strategies. Think front and back of the knee when you're talking about regional anesthesia for the knee. And if you're going to be using additional surgical local anesthetic infiltration, make sure you work out the total allowable local anesthetic dose. And you can come up with personalized block combinations. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you were to think about it in terms of metals, you could start off with your bronze level being a femoral triangle nerve block with surgical local infiltration. If you wanted to do a bit more, you could do a femoral triangle nerve block and then say, actually, I'll do an IPAC block or a true adductor canal block and let my surgeon do a bit of more local anesthetic. Or you could say, I'm going to do all of the, the local anesthetic as blocks. You could do a femoral triangle block, an IPAC block and add in geniculars. And what I think is really the platinum component of this recipe is to do a femoral triangle block, an eye plaque, the geniculars, and add in the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves. And that I think is a complete recipe which I use with good effect. What are our medication options? Well, generally speaking, we tend to use long acting local anesthetics. Uh, for the femoral triangle, we need somewhere between 10 to 20 mils of local anesthetic. For the anterior femoral cutaneous nerve, somewhere between 3 to 5 milliliters. For the geniculars, we need between 2 to 5 mils per nerve, and for the IPAP block, somewhere between 10 to 20 mils. So depending upon where you use those doses, you'll end up with a total volume somewhere between 30 to 60 mils of local anaesthetic, aiming to get up to 24 hours worth of analgesia, sometimes longer. But it's important to use multimodal analgesia here to maximize your effect. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that useful.